So you're about to buy a laser and you're hit with the same decision that pretty much everybody has to make. Do you want a laser that is really good at engraving or do you want a laser that is really good at cutting? And it's this fundamental compromise is pretty much built into every single laser on the market. But what if I told you it didn't have to be that way? So in this video, I wanna show you how Excel Laser is using adaptive focus technology to be able to give you a really fine focused laser beam for engraving as well as a a thicker one for cutting. I'm gonna break down exactly how this system works, as well as answer some questions I've seen pop up after the Kickstarter launched, as well as the last video I did on their machine. So if you've seen any of my reviews in the past, especially when we're talking about diode lasers, like this one right here from Raleigh, we talk about as the wattage gets higher and higher, your laser dot is getting thicker and thicker, meaning that you're not gonna be as detailed in your laser engraving. So that's why a lot of times manufacturers will give you the ability to do a lower wattage. So like on this one, you can switch between 10 and 20 watts. You do 10 watts if you want to do the details and then 20 watts if you're wanting to do cutting. And that's basically because especially with diodes, to get more power, you're packing in more diodes on top of each other. And as you're introducing more and more diodes, the beam is getting thicker and thicker. But the dot size isn't the only thing that changes. The depth that you stay in focus, and you can see from this image, you can like actually see the beam getting thicker and thinner, there's a sweet spot basically where the beam is fully focused. As you're getting higher and higher in power, and this applies to like CO2 lasers as well, you're gonna have a greater distance where the beam is in focus, meaning you're gonna be able to cut through material, even if you can't like drop the laser head down as you're going, where when you have a smaller laser dot, that distance is gonna be a lot smaller, and that usually doesn't matter because you're not trying to cut through it. And that's especially true if we're talking about fiber machines, which have a very small distance where it's in focus, focus, but the laser dot is really small. So there's really only been like two ways to get around this. One is if you can actually switch the wattage in the laser module itself on diode machines, or like back in the day, companies like Xtool would let you completely swap out their laser modules to go like low power and then you can switch it for something high power. But then with CO2 machines, since the power is generated by the big glass tube on the back, you can't really change that out. So what you can do is actually adjust the lens in the laser head. So you can get a lens that is is really good for engraving, so finer focus, or one that is better for cutting. But you still have to like physically switch things out. Where Excel Laser is doing something very unique, and pretty much I've only seen on higher end machines, and that's with their dynamic focus. And so inside of the laser head, and their video kind of shows it, so I'm just gonna put this on repeat so you can kind of see what's going on. There is a lens that can actually slide up and down like in real time, so it's completely controlled by the machine itself. And this is in addition to all the normal optics that you see with the machine. And what's great is as you slide, I think the mirror down, you're gonna have a finer focus, whereas you slide the mirror up, you're gonna have a wider dot, this is gonna be a lot better for cutting. So it's basically giving you the CO2 like lens swap system, but all internal to the machine itself. And I actually don't have the machine to show you. I think there's like only two units and they're overseas, but I do plan on doing a full review when the system is out. But I thought I would use like actual camera optics to show you a couple of these. So you can basically kind of think of it like a zoom on a lens to where literally the mirror is moving up and down. And in this case, it's like changing where the focal plane is, but it's more or less doing something similar inside the laser. Head. So it's not just like it's going engrave or cutting. Now one caveat with the system that I've learned after my last video came out is it's not measuring the depth in real time. So it does have like a LiDAR sensor that allows you to get autofocus, but you actually have to upload a 3D model. So like the demo they're using, they actually have the full 3D model. So it can use that 3D model data to be able to like calculate all the crazy tool paths to do it. Now the dream would be a machine that can measure that distance in real time and like adjust it on the fly, but just being able to do it from a 3D model is really cool as well. But that's not the only innovation that they've got. They've also completely reimagined how the movement of the machine works. Before we talk more about the machine, I wanna let you know that this video is sponsored by Lightburn, specifically LBX, which is their Lightburn conference, which is coming up on July 19th through the 20th in New York City. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that Lightburn is always my top recommendation for software. Uh, so it's really cool to see them putting together a full conference 
around it. So there's tons of different talks from laser experts. And what I really like about the lineup is it's not just like us YouTube folks who just review these machines. A lot of these people are running full-time laser businesses. So if that's something you're looking to start or to grow, you're gonna be able to pick up a lot of really cool tips. They've got vendors as well, so maybe you can pick out your next machine. I think Excel Laser is actually gonna be there. So if you wanna see this machine in person, that would be a great place to do it. Another really cool thing they're doing is the laser craft market, which is like on the ground floor of where the conference is happening. And what's cool about that is basically like a big craft show. So it's gonna be open to the public. So you can actually sell stuff, but it can also be a really cool place to get ideas on what's working, as well as talk to people that are running shops as well. Now registration is closing on June 15th, which is coming up very soon. And if you wanna save 25 bucks on the ticket, they've given me a promo code that is make or break dash LBX 2025. So I encourage you guys to use that as well. All right, let's get back into the machine. And so this is their six axis system. And we already talked about this a lot in the last video. That is why I have these two machines on here because you're combining the X, the Y, and the Z with a normal gain frame machine with a galvanometer that is inside of the laser head. So that is where you're getting the six axes and they're calling them X, Y, and Z. And then U, V, and W, which normally those are like rotational. But I think in this case, they just mean like, is the X, Y, and Z of the Galvo itself. Now, again, since I don't have the machine in front of me, I'm going to use another camera. In this case, the camera is on a gimbal. We can talk about a few aspects of this six axis system that's really going to speed up your workflow. So if you imagine the camera is the actual lens for the laser, in this case, I'm just going to point it down a little bit. And then I am the gantry, like moving this around in the X and the Y, and then also up and down for the Z. One thing that's really cool is you're getting the speeds of a Galvo and you're not limited by like the stepper motors in the X and the Y. The ability of the gavel to move separate of the gantry is really nice, especially in terms of overall speed. Galvo, which I think they're quoting at 4,000 millimeters per second versus the gantry, which is at 400 millimeters per second. But then you're also getting the advantages of the acceleration. And that is a lot of times where you're limited on these machines. So literally the amount of time it takes for this to slow down and speed back up. If you're doing like a big raster photo engrave, but a lot of the time isn't actually spent when the laser is firing it's when it's slowing down and then speeding back up. And why fiber lasers are so nice in general is the fact that you're only moving a mirror, which can move really quick. And like high end lasers currently, you'll see like a max acceleration around 3G, sometimes up to 5G, but because they're able to tap into the fiber, we're talking about like 50G. So really fast accelerations that are not tied to the stepper motors. But another cool aspect of it that I've seen a couple people ask about, and that was specifically about engraving on rings. So like a ring, but on the inside of a ring. And they were basically asking like, can you rotate the ring with the rotary to be able to get on the inside. And what Excel Laser is saying is because you have the angle of the galvanometer. So again, if I turn this back on, so like with a normal laser, this will just be shooting straight down. But in this case, it's like shooting down to an angle. And because of that angle, you can actually shoot inside of the ring versus having to like rotate it on its side or something to be able to get inside of it. And you can imagine how that can play out on a bunch of different materials. Just being able to shoot from the side, you're able to get into different areas you just couldn't before. This is where the dynamic focus comes into play as well, because since you're coming at an angle versus straight down, thanks to trigonometry, this distance is further. So they're able to adjust the focus also on the fly. So that engraving is highly detailed. Now, one thing I might've missed in my last video is with all of this like high speed movement, you're gonna get some vibration in the machine. And since you're trying to do really detailed engraving, you might see wavy lines as a result. I know with fiber machines, you sometimes can see that. And that's why a lot of times you don't run them at the top high end speeds. With their machine, they're pulling from 3D printing technology to basically like counteract it with vibrations. And they have like a before and after, and it's pretty impressive. Once I can actually test this machine out, I can show you guys how well this works, but it's cool they're already trying to implement this technology. Okay, we've talked about six axes, but it's really not. There's actually more because the Z axis is wild. There's actually three different ways the Z axis is moving. You have your traditional like up and down on the gantry. You can see that's like the overall laser head moving up and down. And then the work bed itself is moving up and down. And then finally, you technically have the Z axis, that focus mirror that is moving up and down as well. So to count it up, you're getting X and Y in the gantry. So two, X and Y on the Galvo, four, and then the Z up and down, the work bed up and down, six, and finally the focus up and down, seven. So seven axes of movement uh, with one of them being focused. So it kind of counts, kind of doesn't, but it's really cool. 
Now, while the dynamic focus is great to switch between engraving and cutting, the real reason why you lose detail as you step up in power has to do with the beam quality. And this is referred to M squared or M2, which is like a value where one is basically perfect and you really only find this in like a lab setting. They've got a chart showing like different M2 values. And the best way to think about this is like the messiness of the laser beam. You can imagine as you're pumping more and more power through more and more diodes, the actual beam itself isn't gonna be perfect. So this is a good way to measure how good that beam is. And sometimes people refer to this as the brightness of the beam itself. And a lot of times you'll see this referenced as the actual size of the beam dot. Now for their middle and high end machines, their pro and their ultra, they're claiming an M squared value of 20 for their diode laser. This is 55 watts for the pro and then 80 watts for the ultra. Now this is not the fiber laser. This is like a blue light diode. And what they're claiming is that even at those really high powered levels, you're basically getting a beam quality that is comparable to a 20 watt laser. And the way they're doing that is how the laser beam is getting to the laser head. Because now since this is a Galvo, because now the laser head isn't where the diode is. I think on their pictures, it's like generated over here on the side. And then it uses a fiber optic cable to carry that diode laser beam to the laser head. And they're calling this a diode fiber coupled laser. And basically that fiber optic cable is kind of like a nozzle on a water hose to where all of the messiness in that 55 watt or 80 watt beam is getting refined in the fiber cable and then getting shot down through crazy Galvo focus system. Now this isn't on their essential, which is already 20 watts, but in the pro and the ultra, they're using that fiber optic cable to give you that same 20 watt beam size, but at super high wattages. And when you take those three elements together, so the adaptive focus, the six axis speed, and then the beam quality, what that really means for you is the amount of time that's gonna take you to produce products is going to be way less. Not only are you getting crazy speed just from the galvanometer on the gantry, but because you have a 55 or an 80 watt diode, you can run that way faster than you could with a 20 watt to get the same like engraving result. Now, all of that technology comes with a risk as well as a price. And this gets us to the Kickstarter aspect of it. I know there's a lot of reviewers out there, especially in like the 3D printing market that really don't talk about Kickstarter because there's a long history of like super cool looking machines that never actually shipped. Because from what I've learned, the hard part isn't in actually putting together a prototype, it's taking that prototype and manufacturing it for the masses. Now, one thing that does make me feel better about Excel Laser is their CEO has come from Snapmaker and then Snapmaker itself launched as a Kickstarter. It was like a three-in-one laser 3D printer CNC machine and they were able to ship to the backers and they've come out with more versions. So I feel pretty confident with that background, they'll be able to get something shipped out, but we aren't actually gonna be able to see shipped units until like November, which is why typically with Kickstarters, it's like back at your own risk. But the price is basically gonna be at the lowest it's ever gonna be as a result. So with the price of the essential is 1800 bucks, and that's a 20 watt diode laser and then a two watt infrared diode laser. So the essential isn't a fiber machine at all but that two watt infrared module is gonna open you up to be able to engrave on metal, but just don't think about it as like a traditional fiber. Now the HD1 Pro is coming in at $3,800. This is the 55 watt purple diode that's fiber coupled to give you that really nice beam quality, as well as an actual 20 watt fiber laser. So something just like this. And then finally their ultra is six grand. That's gonna be 80 watts for your diode and then 60 watts for your fiber. And in that case, that fiber is going to be a MOPA and basically MOPA opens you up to being able to do a bunch of different materials. And they have told me the laser manufacturer of the MOPA fiber source is JPT, which is basically at the high end. Now, a couple things with the pricing that I've seen people ask that they have answered. First is like taxes and tariffs and all that kind of stuff, especially if you're in the US. They've said all of that is currently included in the price. And they also have a chart for shipping. And so in the US, that's going to be hundred bucks. So know that it will be an additional purchase. And then finally, I've seen people talk about the rotary. So to use the rotary, you're actually gonna have to use the riser base. So that will be an additional purchase. Now, all that being said, that price point is actually pretty good, especially for the pro. Pretty much no machine that I have has that like fiber coupled diode technology. Um, so that's really, really cool. And then if you're tacking on just like a normal fiber machine, those get expensive as well. And if you do want to price compare a bunch of different machines, I've put together a big chart that kind of lists out all the different ones, all the different features and all the different prices in one spot. And you guys can download that down below.
And if you have any other questions about this machine, I'd love to do my best to answer this, especially while the Kickstarter is running, so you can make your best informed decision. All right, until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys. Thank you.